Good morning everybody. Welcome to Wonderful Wordy Wednesday where we're going to have fun playing with words. Oh dear, that won't do will it? Good morning everybody and welcome to Wonderful Wordy Wednesday where we're going to have fun playing with words. How we say our words makes a lot of difference doesn't it? I don't think you would have wanted to join my lesson the way I started it the first time, do you? Today, in our Exploring Poetry Week, we're going to look at how we say our words. We're going to look at performance. Thinking about how we say the words in our poem can help give them meaning. It can help our listeners to understand what we're saying. It can make it more exciting. Or it can make it sad if we need to. Actually, how we say our words matters all the time, doesn't it? It's not just about our poetry. When we're talking to our friends, it matters how we say our words. And sometimes we say something without thinking about it. Maybe our friend looks sad. Maybe next time we should think about how we said what we said and think, oh, I'm sorry, I'll have another go at that. So today we're going to think about performing. But can you remember what we learnt about yesterday? Do you remember that big word? That's right, onomatopoeia. Can you say it? Onomatopoeia. It's got rhythm, hasn't it? It's a big word. Can you remember what it meant? Can you? It had a quite a simple meaning, didn't it? That's right, onomatopoeia just means a word that sounds like what it means, a sound word. So today we're going to use Joseph Quaylo again today to help us to understand about performing and to help us make our performing even better. Let's watch together. What I love about poetry is that you can perform it anywhere. There are performance spaces all around us. In the bedroom, in the playground, on a balcony, even from outer space. Through poetry, I get to play with words and experiment with how I say different things. Sometimes I perform a poem loudly. loudly. The war drums boom and shake the metal from the land. Sometimes I perform a poem quietly. The tiny mouse peeps and creeps as you sleep. Sometimes I perform a poem quickly. Fantastic fireworks fizz with fiery flame. Or slowly, I was at the end of the race, about to cross the finish line. Or mix it up. The rain was pattering. Then the thunder boomed. The lightning zipped, zapped, snapped. I was drenched to the bone. When I'm performing a poem, I like to think about the tone of the poem. Is it a happy poem or a sad poem? Is it an angry poem or a confused poem? Thinking about emotions in this way can help make the meaning of the poem more easily understood by making the tone clear. The gray clouds wept, a bucket of rain down on me on the stone gray streets. Sometimes a poem is written in the actual voice of a character. And if so, I will think about what that character might sound like. I am the troll that lives under the bridge. I eat all manner of things. I once ate a fridge. As so Joseph Quaylo gave us some ideas there, didn't he? To make our writing sound exciting when we read it. I wonder if we can think a little bit more about that now. He did use his body too, didn't he? He had some actions there going to think about actions tomorrow in our lesson but today we're going to think about how we said things. Think back about the video and how Joseph said things. You can watch the video again if you want to. You can just rewind if you need some more ideas. Let's see if we can use what Joseph just told us to help us with our own performance. So we might read some words loudly in a booming voice. 
wonder what things we would use loud voices for. Would you use a loud voice for the word whisper? Or for the word crash? Try them out, have a go. Whisper! whisper crash that's right you'd use a quiet voice if you were saying whisper and you wanted your reader and your listener to understand it wouldn't you let's have another one you might read some words quietly like whisper whispering softly would you use a quiet voice for creeping or boom which one works with a quiet voice boom 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 doesn't really work with a quiet voice does it creep quietly past your sleeping baby brother Creep quietly past your sleeping brother. Loud voice doesn't work for that one, does it? You need a quiet voice. Let's have another one. So we've talked about using our voices loudly or quietly. What about quickly and slowly? So you might read a poem really quickly, racing through the words. Let's think about it. Um, let me give you an example. He waded through the mud. He ran from the lion. Now again, one of those works better than the other read quickly, doesn't it? Which one do you think? He waded through the mud. He ran quickly from the lion. He ran quickly from the lion really works, doesn't it? It makes it exciting. It makes you feel like it's urgent. But can you wade quickly through mud? Let's think about the things that we might want to say more slowly. He waded through the mud. Makes it much more likely that his feet are getting stuck every time and it's really slow, doesn't it? So we can use volume, loud, or quiet but we can also use speed how quickly we say our words or how slowly we say our words also gives more meaning to our words let's see what voices we could use for some other words how might you say these words if you were performing them let's have a look What do you think? Would you say bang or bang? <laughs> Sorry, did I make you jump? Would you say drip, 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 drip when the tap? Or would you say drip, 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 drip when the tap? Which one sounds better? How about the telephone? That's an old fashioned telephone, isn't it? Most of you've got mobile phones that are small now, or your parents have. But this, you can see from the picture that it's ringing. Would you say ring, ring? Would you say ring, ring? to give that ringing sound for your reader. It's your choice, you can have a go. See how you make your phone ring. Maybe your phone goes beep, 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 beep. See what you can do. You have a play with the words. Joseph Quayle also talked about the characters in our poem. 
characters, or the people, or the animals in our poem. He talked about whether poems were happy or sad too, didn't he? The tone of the poem. Let's think about these characters. What voices might you use? So some poems are read in character. Think about here. What sound would these characters make? You use your voice and have a go. You can pause the video if you need to while you practice. Our first character is a monster. How do you think a monster would sound? Now, different monsters might sound different. You might want to think about whether he looks like a friendly monster or not. Can you do a friendly monster voice? What do you think? Again, pause the video, have a go. You could try out some different voices and see which one you think works best. Okay, let me hear your monster voices. Brilliant, and they all sound really different, but really good. I wondered whether this monster with his great big trunk might sound a bit like he had a blocked up nose. It could be quite funny. I don't know. Maybe yours was really scary. Or maybe he was really friendly. The nice thing about it is there's not a right answer. You can choose. It's going to be your poem. Let's try a different character now. character might be a, a fairy, yes. I wonder how would your fairy sound? Again, pause the video and have a practice. Maybe you need to jump around the room and pretend to be a fairy to really work out what it's going to sound like. Take your time. Come back to me when you've got a good one. Are you ready? Give me your fairy voices now. Well done, everybody. Lots of different fairy voices there. That's fantastic. OK, now it's time for you to go off from the video to do some activity for yourself. So today's activity is that we've got some sound words to think about. How would you say these sound words? Would you say them loudly, quietly, quickly? or slowly, loudly, quietly, quickly, or slowly. So you can either print the sheet or you can just write a list in your book. There's no need to print anything if you haven't got a printer or you don't want to print them. I want you to think about the pictures on this onomatopoeia. There's that big word onomatopoeia, our sound words, the things that sound like their meaning and think about how you would say them and sort them into groups. And then we've got some characters here. So you could choose, you could either do the sound words or you could do the characters. If you're feeling energetic today, you could have a look at both or you could do a mixture. You could do a few of each. Up here, we've got the characters. So you could think about how would the dragon speak, for instance. Would it be breathing fire? And how would that sound? How would the alien speak? Maybe he'd even make up his own language. What about the wolf? Or the fairy? Or the witch? Could you be a witch? How would your witch sound? Maybe she'd be a friendly witch and cast nice spells. Have a play around with the words before you sort them. Try out some different voices. Practice your performance. It's about playing around with them and having fun. Have a good day, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow.